You are now listening to the HBCU Wall Street Podcast. Hello, Aggies. This is Miss Fred from Carolina Chicken and Waffles. This episode of the HBCU Wall Street Podcast is sponsored by Carolina Chicken and Waffles, the home of our family famous fried chicken and waffles. Aggie Pride. Carolina Chicken and Waffles. The chicken. So good. Man, it was amazing. The food tastes like it looked. I mean, no offense to my grandma, but your chicken's better. So. <laughs> That chicken was so good. I told him if my mama was on the truck, I'd come up there and slap the hell out of her. Cause it was good like that. You're drinking a beer that tastes like home, reminds you of Washington, and your good old fashioned chicken and waffles. It's great. Hello, hello, people. Welcome to another episode of Aggies Excel. Um, Today we have with us Bree Peters. How are you, Bree? Yes, hello. I am good. How are you? Um, I'm doing great. Doing great. Um, Here living life. Over the world one city at a time. So I'm excited. So I'm going to tell the people just a little bit about you so so you all know who you're talking to. So Bree is a a Chicago native. she moved to North Carolina, of course, to attend the illustrious North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University, where she graduated in 2015 um, with, a, with a bachelor's degree in business management. And of course, after graduating, she started her career um, in technology, where she's held down a variety of different um, roles, including customer support, reporting and analytics, UX, UI design, um, and now a product owner. Um, now, of course, She's on here because she's taken her hustle outside of corporate America and, and has started to do her own thing. And that's that's what we're excited about. Um, so we're going to get to look, know a little bit about um, Brie. And, you know, of course, outside of corporate America, she started her own brand, Black Collective, and um, and a trucking business made mobile. Uh, so we're going to we're going to dig into that to, to to find out a little bit about that. But to start off, Brie, this is what I, I love to do. I love to to talk to my Aggies. And I love to ask this question because the, the answer is so important to me. Here's the question. When you hear the word Jiho, what comes to mind? Family. It's like a family reunion. <laughs> family. That's what it is. Even if you're not family, you're family during Jiho. <laughs> Absolutely. Yo, listen, I'm, I'm excited because I'm hitting at about 95%. 95% of everybody I asked that question to Family is an answer. Are you serious? Ninety-five percent of everybody, because that's what it is. Like you come to Jiho, and you really feel like it's just a huge family reunion. Like if you yeah. ever been to a family reunion, everybody, everybody is just excited to see you because everybody loves you because they all family. Hey, baby, how you doing? Come get mm-hmm. something to eat, something to drink. They're taking care of you. That's what it is. Imagine that times hundreds of thousands of people. Like so, it's a huge family reunion slash party slash networking event that lasts for about a week. Um, but amazing time amazing time so you understand you understand and so let's let's talk about what you're doing um so let me ask you this what was your reason for for starting um black collective the whole reason behind black collective is just realizing the gap of resources that we provide to each other black owned resources that we provide to each other and i realized that it wasn't really a gap people had the resources within our communities. It was just the awareness of those black owned brands. So with Black Collective, my whole goal was to bring black resources, black entrepreneurs together and kind of use the barter system because coming up in my entrepreneurial journey, I found there was a lot of things that I needed to to do to start the business that others have already done, but it required money. So I'm like, if I can provide you with something that I do within my business and vice versa, let's just help each other out. Um, so that's kind of where the whole Black Collective 
idea came around and it just grew right. to me putting on different events like sip and shop events or um, just different networking events for entrepreneurs to come together to connect. Good stuff. Good stuff. That's 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 really needed. I mean, I can I can tell you, um, of course, as an entrepreneur, I remember starting my business and I think why well, I'm not going to say most, but a lot of entrepreneurs, including me. The one thing I realized was I really kind of wish I had some more money, like I needed more capital. There were so many things that needed to get done, so many things I needed to invest in. So it was just like, OK, how am I going to get all of this done? And you find a way to do it. Mm -hmm. But that's an amazing idea. Um, Thank you. So good stuff. Now, how did you come up with the, the whole um, made mobile business idea? So it's kind of twofold. So before I started Black Collective, I helped my mom start her business, Cats Creations, where she started off like with hair butters and shea, shea moistures. Um, <clears throat> and she would always say, I want you to get me a storefront. I want to own a store. And I'm like, you know, that's that's a little hefty. I, <laughs> you know, we don't have that type of money just yet. But that was always her thing. Like, I want a storefront. And then she's, she's always been a hustler. So she also wanted an ice cream truck. So I'm like, okay, you have a lot going on right now. Let's, uh, let's figure this out. So during COVID, my best friend, she does nails, but she was doing nails out of her apartment. Um, but you know, with COVID, she just be, started becoming a little uncomfortable with people coming into her home. So I said, what if you did a mobile nail shop? And from there, I started looking into box trucks. Um, <clears throat> so it took me about a year to, to find a box truck, like an old U-Haul type truck. So what I did is I gutted out the box truck. I installed electricity, AC and heat, um, removable shelves. I don't know if you can see in the background, removable shelves and everything. So essentially, I have this mobile storefront now. So I rent it out to entrepreneurs to take their business mobile, whether it's a mobile nail salon, a mobile storefront. Someone used as a mobile um, dog treat truck, literally anything. Um, that's kind of where it came from. Good stuff. That's an amazing thing. And that that really, that can help entrepreneurs out greatly. Because there's one thing as an entrepreneur, I mean, to have a product, have a top-notch product. But when you package it in something like that, it really takes your product up a couple of notches in Thank people's you. mind. And the product mm -hmm. is still the same. But you're right, the perception changes. And when yep. perception changes... <laughs> willing to pay more and so it's it's definitely a um a great thing for entrepreneurs that's an amazing idea i mean it, that 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 definitely sounds like it came from the mind on aggie i mean i'm just you know I, you know it, it had to be it, had it only be. makes sense right it only makes sense man that, that aggies do i tell people all the time listen aggies do yes we do, aggies do. so let me ask you this i'm gonna switch lanes a little bit so, because I want people to know a little bit more about Brie. I want people to understand the business, but also understand who the person is behind the business. So let me ask you this, Brie. So if, if right now I gave you 10K mm -hmm. and I said, now this is hypothetical, okay, Brie? I mean, you cool and all, but I'm not about to give you 10K. All right, all right so all right. hypothetically, you know, don't get too excited. So if I gave you 10K and said, Brie, hey, this 10K is yours. Um, you cannot spend it on your business at all. You have to use this 10K, maybe just for a weekend with you and do something that you love to do. You have to have fun and you have to spend it all on you. What would you do? Wow, that's hard. That's hard because the first answer that came to mind was taking my family on a trip somewhere, but that's for my family, not specifically for me. I don't know. <laughs> Is, is the correct answer to, to donate as an Aggie alumni and make myself feel <laughs> that? <laughs> no, no, good answer, good answer. But this has to be all Brie. This has to be something that makes Brie smile, something that Brie enjoys doing. I think I would just spend it towards traveling, honestly. Like, that's my that's my happy space is just traveling, different experiences, different cultures. So I don't know how much 10K will get me in today's culture, but I'll definitely use it to travel. Gotcha. You, you can see something with 10K. You can see That's something with 10K. Yeah, you can see something. It's interesting because um, other people have had that, that same reaction. A couple of other people are just like, oh, I want to do something for my family and friends, uh, 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 you know, as well and incorporate them. And that's great. So that says a lot about you as a person. It says a lot about your heart. So, you know, great, you know, initial thought process. Yeah. Now, so um, 
So after you travel, you, you come back, um, you're, you're refreshed, you're invigorated, you're excited, you're, you're excited, your creative juices are get, getting going because you've seen something different, you've just been in a different space. Mm -hmm. um, what does a typical week look like for you when it comes to just really trying to progress your business? A typical week for me is getting out networking. Um, there's um, a company out here called The Factory, and it's kind of like a hub for Black entrepreneurs, to be honest. Um, but just going to events like that throughout the city of Raleigh to network and really promote my event. Um, yeah, just that, just getting out. I'm a people's person as well. So like, I like getting out and seeing what the city has to offer and seeing what, what businesses are sprouting out of, of Raleigh because Black entrepreneurship is definitely rising in, in the area here in Raleigh. So it's exciting to see for sure. Absolutely. I get excited because I've learned, I've seen kind of a pattern. I see businesses that have a large population of Black professionals are now starting to have a large population of Black entrepreneurs. Yeah. And so I've seen the pattern all across the country. It's exciting to see it. I'm, I'm, I'm all for it because I'm all about community building. I'm all about doing for yourself. I'm all about, you know, creating something that's going to benefit not just you, but the community. Um, yeah. And so I, I get excited about that. But, but this, this entrepreneur journey, it's a, it, you learn a lot. You for sure. For sure. And, and I like seeing it because, I mean, entrepreneurship is not an easy thing to do. And just to see the confidence that we have as a community now to say, you know, let me just try it. Like, what's the worst that can happen? And I'm seeing a, a lot of that confidence now, which I love. Absolutely. Um, Man, I, I encourage people to do it. So I've been in corporate America for a while. Mm -hmm. um, I'm now currently a full time entrepreneur. But okay. I this is not my first you know, rodeo when it comes to entrepreneurship. I've started stuff, I've failed. I've started stuff, I've failed. I mean, it's, it's a part of the process. And I think now I'm, I'm wiser to understand what needs to be in place, what needs to happen to make things successful. So it's, it's taught me a lot of lessons. Entrepreneurship will teach you, it will teach you a lot of business lessons. It'll also teach you a lot of lessons about yourself. For sure. <laughs> For real. Let me ask you this. So what lessons have you learned being an entrepreneur? Um, can I be honest with you? Please. I can please. be, as an Aggie, I'm going to be honest. Okay. I can be a pretty petty person. You know, like when, <laughs> when someone, you know, does something I don't like to me, you know, I can be pretty petty and return the energy. And I've learned that I can't use that in business. Um, and mm -hmm. for example, um, one of the first projects for this box truck, I tried to do like a mobile holiday photo booth with mm -hmm. Santa and a photographer and everything. But you know, I had no luck with photographers following through, you know, um, to the point where I had to buy my own camera and become a photographer myself for, for those <laughs> moments. But my mentality in the beginning was, you know what? Oh, I can't wait for this truck to blow up. So I, I can't wait for them to come back to me, circle the block and ask me to rent the truck. And I would just say no. And I'm like, you know what? You can't have that type of mentality in business because I mean, it's okay to split, spin a block again. And what I've learned is my timing is won't be aligned to your timing, but that does not mean that there will not be a good time for us to collaborate, you know? So mm -hmm. not taking things so personal is the biggest lesson I've learned because it's a personality change for me. So it's, it's something I'm working on, but I, I'm glad I recognized it early in my uh, journey. Let me tell you something. I can really vibe with you on that a hundred percent because I'm a type. I'm. I've taken early in the early days a lot of things personal. You know, when it comes to business, like I'm a type. I experienced the same thing. I've had people that agreed to stuff and then they didn't show up or they didn't do what they said. Like, and it really in the beginning it pissed me off. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, just wait, wait till I blow up, wait till I get my money. Right? I'm like, yo. And so, but now, but now it's like, okay, I can't, I can't, Rashad, just let it go. I have to, talk, I have to talk to myself, say, Rashad, let that go, let that go. So it teaches me a lot about myself. You have to understand, it makes you separate your feelings from business, because yes. business, because personally, I'm like, I don't like you now. 
I don't <laughs> like you. <Yes. laughs> I'm not pretending like I do. But business-wise, it's like, okay, if there's an opportunity to, to really deal with this person in the future, can you do this if it'll be beneficially, you know, beneficially progressive for both of you? Both, yeah. Um, and so I, ha I have to really you know, change my mindset. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I ain't all the way there yet. I'm not all the way there, <laughs> but I'm working on it. I'm growing. I'm growing. I'm getting better. <laughs> That's getting all better. that matters. Continuous progress. That's all that matters. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Progress. So let me ask you this. So if, if somebody just said, okay, the Black Collective, what is that? How do I become, you know, um, link to it? How could it benefit me? If somebody had those questions, what would you want to tell them? What would you want them to know? What is what is Black Collective? I mean, well, I guess what am I trying to say? The whole idea behind Black Collective, you scratch my back, I scratch yours. We each have something that we can benefit off of each other from. So how do we get connected? I have a website, blackcollective.com. I have social media, Black Collective on Instagram. Um, connecting with me is simple through social media, um, through my website, and you should see me in public as well if I'm doing my job correctly. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so now Black Collective, just so the people know, the Black Collective is spelled B-L-A-Q-K, right? Yes, and okay. let me explain the significance. Thank you for explain asking that. I forgot about that. I was going to ask about that, but go ahead. Thank go ahead. you. So it's Black, B-L-A-Q-K, the Q and K as a reminder that we still are queens and kings. Mm. So Black. I queens. like that. Thank you. Hey, we vibe. I like that. Like, you should check out the shirt. Did you see the shirt? You I love the shirt? it. You're, I love yeah. it. Yeah, I, love I, it. I feel that. I love that. I love that. So with the Black Collective, so let's say 10 years from now, when you blow up and you're in one of your penthouse condos at somewhere you decide to be, mm -hmm. what will the business look like? Like, what is your vision for the Black Collective? How do you want it to look? My vision for Black Collective is, to, is that Walmart strategy. You know how Walmart, you can go get your, your wheels realigned and the oil change they have a bank in walmart you know that walmart has their own food brands clothing brands so that's kind of what i see as black collective just that super retail of all black resources that one-stop shop that that central location for 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 black creatives black black businesses black resources that's how i see in the future mm, that is gold and i'm just talking from an entrepreneurial standpoint like if that was one place I could go to get everything I need for my business. Cause for example, right now I was talking to somebody cause I had to hire somebody cause I want to make some updates to my website. I was talking to somebody else about some marketing, doing some things, talking about to somebody else with some products that I was going to add to, you know, one of my offering. Like, so I'm like on a normal, in the past month, I've talked to about uh, maybe five to six different people with mm -hmm. things that I need for my business. It's just, mm -hmm. it's necessary. That's what I need. So to be able to talk, to go to one place and and be able to yeah. flush out uh, all of that, have, that is go. It's going to save people a lot of time. Yes. And it's, it's kind of, it's like, it's service oriented for me. Like we have all these black products, but let's package it as a service. You know, let's okay. don't, like you said, you're going to one place for marketing, one place for a website design, another place for something else. How about we provide you a service? Let's, I don't know, business, business enhancements. And that one service package includes all of those things for you. You don't have to go out searching separately for everything. So yeah, that's definitely that's the goal. Great. That's great. And that's good stuff. That's really good stuff. Something else I'm just like so impressed by. I didn't, didn't I'm going to ask you to do it every time. I'm so impressed by I want all of the entrepreneurs to take note. And when you showed up, when you came on camera, I was like, oh, it's an interesting background. Like, what's this? What's this about? What's she doing? And then I was going to ask. And then I'm like, yo, she is in her business. Like, this yes. is what she does. Yes. Like, I was gonna pull up on y'all. I was gonna drive. Yo, I was gonna pull up. Yo, just, <laughs> hey, you still can if you want to. Like, we'll we'll let you know. Like, we'll give you a whole a week feature. But um, 
But I love that. Like, and it's the 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 mindset of an entrepreneur. You have to be marketing at all times, especially small business. Yeah. You have yeah. to to keep your your business at the forefront of all times. And it's not just a a, a marketing thing, a physical thing. It's a mental thing because when yeah. you do that. You keep it on the top of your mind all the time. You find so many different ways to introduce your business yeah. to other people. And if it's on your mind all the time, it starts to slowly be on your, your customers' minds yeah. with what you do. And so it's 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 definitely a genius move. Like so Thank I'm you. I, you. I give you props for that. I'm telling you, them Aggies that. do. Them <laughs> Aggies are something Aggies special. Do. Aggies do, yes. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. I have another question for you. Um yeah. When it comes to your experience at the illustrious North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University, um, how has a and had an impact on you in your life right now? Um, so I didn't always go to a and I went to Howard my freshman year. Okay. I transferred to A&T sophomore through senior year. Um, and when I tell you the difference between the two was, was huge. Like a t wasn't as cutthroat. a t was more family oriented. It's, it's like that Southern love, you know? Um, and I think that's one of the biggest things that a t kind of instilled in me was that like sense of, I don't know if it's family or like that sense of like, collaboration you know I don't know it was like working together like Aggies do and we do together and when we do together it becomes even better like and that's that's what I got from auntie honestly just that sense of of togetherness um, that's huge that's yeah. huge and it's familiar to, to to most of us that sense of community is something I haven't found at too many other places like that family atmosphere, that community atmosphere. It's like, if you're an Aggie, like I told somebody a, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, yo, it's it, it's no matter how how good or bad of a day I'm having, my day is elevated. Whenever I'm out in public, and let's say I may have on a hat or a shirt or something, and I hear somebody from across the room or way on the other side of the parking lot just yell, Aggie pride. And, I, and I'm like, I know people are like, yo, who are these dudes? That a gang? Like, what is <laughs> What's going on? Like, I, it's happened to me in the airports. It's, it's happened to me at conferences, everywhere. And it's such a, a feeling of, of community. It's like yes. instantly, I know a little bit about you. Instantly, yep. I rock with you. Instantly, yep. I may not know you, but you fam. It's almost yep. like going to a family reunion to a cousin you never met. Like, you don't know who they are, but bottom line, we family. So come on, like, what can I do yeah. for you? How I, let me make sure you have a good time. Make sure you're taken care of. And that's what it is. Like that atmosphere is second to none, in my opinion. I, I 100% agree. And and you speak about seeing Aggies in airports. Like Aggies are really worldwide. Like we are everywhere. I can go anywhere and I will see an Aggie. Like it's, we are really worldwide. And just going back to your other question, <clears throat> these two questions kind of link because, you know, I'm in corporate America now and we have a lot of Aggies at my job and we didn't know each other coming into the, 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 the job that I work at. But like you said, it's that sense of like instantly seeing an Aggie. We all just click all, all at the corporate workplace. We have our, we have our own separate lunches. We do, you know, recruiting and everything together, but it's that sense of, of, of family for sure. Even if you don't know that Aggie, you still kind of know that Aggie. <laughs> Absolutely. It's it's the same at so many places. Like the so the job I just um left, I told you what now I'm full-time entrepreneur, but my last job, last position, like Aggies, we had our own chat. Like we had, you know, in the message we and and people I know some people, other schools didn't have that. A lot of other schools didn't have that. <laughs> But we we're like, yo, we we Aggies. Like, I don't, yep. y'all, hey, you gotta catch up. We Aggies. Like, this is what yep. we do. We family. Like, it's, exactly. it's family for real. Yeah. But I'm I'm excited. I'm excited for your journey. I'm excited to know that someone's out there doing what you're doing because that is huge. I'm telling you, as an entrepreneur, if when I got started in the beginning, I could have went to one place 
and being able to be connected with so many different other things that I need for my business, that's gold. Like it, it, it reduces your amount of time that's ne necessary. It reduces the amount of brain power. Because now I don't have to keep up with five or six different calls that I got to make of five or six different people I have to reach out to at this time. It allows me to focus on what I can, what I need to be doing. And that's, you know, business operations. So exactly. that's, that's great. But I'm, Thank I'm excited. You. I'm proud of you. Like I'm Thank excited. You. I'm proud of you as an Aggie. I'm proud of you as a part of the family. I'm grateful for what you're doing. I'm excited to see you flourish. One last thing. So this is kind of, well, it's, it's connected a little bit. So I know in your job, you, you know, what you said, one of the roles you did was, you know, UX, UI design, correct? Yeah. Correct. Yes. So I was interested in it at one, one point. So I have a tech background. So I was interested in that, really doing that at one point. And I remember talking to, um, it was going to be a, a, a lateral move within the same company. Yeah. And I was interviewing for it. And I was talking to them about it. And everything they started saying, like, it just got my mind going. And they were talking about the UI. And for those of you who don't know, UI is user interface. It's, you know, for example, the screen, the, the phone, or whatever you're working on, UI deals with, you know, what your customer sees, how your customer interacts with, with these. So this just for the listeners. Um, I know you know, but for the listeners. And so I was just thinking like, yo, in my business, have I ever stopped to take the time to think, how does my customer see me? How, do, how easy is this for my customer? How easy is it for them to order something for me? Is it just one or two clicks or do they have to do this? Like, and so it really got my mind to thinking. And, and from that point on, I was like, yo, I have to stop thinking about what I want from, for the business yes. and what I want to happen. But I have to start thinking about, okay, these people that are paying me, what do what they do want? Because that's what's exactly. most important. Exactly. That is the, it's so many transferable skills that I, I take from my corporate America job to my side businesses. And that is one of the biggest things. Like we, we as entrepreneurs will waste so much money providing what we think customers want. And at the end of the day, we worry why no one is buying our product because no one said that's what they wanted, but we are emotionally connected to our ideas and everything. So that is a very true point. It's all about customer. It's, it's customer. It and that's why Amazon flourishes because they are customer centric. Absolutely. So FYI, that's who I just left at my corporate job. But I mean, great company, but you're right. Like I learned so much there because the mindset really is focused on work from the cut, what the customer wants. Mm -hmm. Let's start with what the customer wants. And then we work backwards to figure out yep. how we're going to create it. Like that's yep. always, that's how we do things. Even on the tech side, it's like, okay, what does the customer want? What does the data say? What does the the, the market desire? Yep. And then we're going to work backwards and, and create, you know, what we need to. And that's, that's the recipe for success because, you know, you, as much as we have these great ideas, but I have to remind myself often, like Rashad, that was an amazing idea. However, you're not selling to yourself, you know, right. so <laughs> exactly. what do these, what do the people want? And so I really started incorporating, getting feedback, like just, mm -hmm. just, you know, a subset of people that I'm cool with or other entrepreneurs. I send stuff out to them like, Hey, what do you think about this? How does this look to you? How does this feel to you? Like, even, you know, I'm an author. So even me writing books, even when I market my books, like I always, even the cover, something is like the cover. I'm I'm sending out to people like, hey, what do y'all think? What do y'all, what, what draws your attention? What, you know, and that's important as a business owner to keep your mind on your money. Yes. And your money and your feelings don't often correlate. Sometimes they're totally different. Exactly. So, it's some good <laughs> stuff, man. Well, I, I can tell your, your business acumen is really high. Like you, you understand, you know, the basics. I know you're going to be successful. Um, one, just because you're Aggie, but two, just talking to you, I can understand that your ideas are great. You know what you're doing. You you, you have a, a, a pulse for what's happening in the market. And so that's a great thing. So I'm I'm excited to see um to see what's gonna happen in your life, to see what's gonna happen in your business. So one last question. Yep. Five years from now, no, let's say seven, seven mm -hmm. years from now, what do you want your life to look like from a business standpoint? Personal too, if you if you desire, but what do you want your life to look like? Five or seven years from now, definitely scale up. Um, I see myself having a mobile truck, at least another one in Ohio and another one in Houston. Um, 
and then just continue this grind. Like, I feel like the next five to seven years is just going to be grind, honestly. Like, I'm just starting off in this journey. I need people to see my vision. So these next years will be working towards exactly that. So, yeah. Well, a lot good, to say, stuff. To say like, I, good stuff. I'm, I'm excited. Like, and it's good you have that vision. Like, y'all hear this breathe? Like, yo, I'm, I'm, I'm scaling. I'm about to hit up different cities. Yeah. Like, this... This this gonna be the, the the BMF of the business world. I'm about to do this. <laughs> I know that's right. I love it. Yes. <laughs> hey, do that. Do that, Bree. Do that. So I'm excited. I I appreciate just what you're doing as an entrepreneur. Um, glad to to know. Um, as another Aggie, you out there crushing it, doing what needs to be to be done. And again, thank you for your time. Thank you for sharing with us and with the world, what you're doing. Um, now tell the people again, before we leave, how can they find you? Just remind them, how how can they get in touch with the Black Collective? Yes, so Black Collective website, you can find me at www.blackcollective.com. And again, Black is spelled B-L-A-Q-K. Collective is spelled the regular way. Um, on social media, you can find me on Instagram at black underscore collective. Cool, and then cool. if y'all pulling up to G Ho, I'm trying to get the truck on G Ho somewhere. So maybe y'all can pull up. I might turn it in, into a little lounge or something. I don't know. Seating area. Absolutely. You can so say. Pull up for me. You'll see the truck listen, out there. Absolutely. We're going to be looking for the Black Collective. All like, right. Listen, like, listen, the Black Collective is coming. She's going to put y'all on notice. Do you hear yes. that? G Ho. Listen, we're going to have to. We, I'm going to have to reach out to you. Aggies XL going to be looking Definitely. for that Black Collective. I'm like, Let me listen. know. I, we'll let you know. We'll let you know. But it's great talking to you, Bree. Um, see, and so, and let me just say this again, because we talk about this family atmosphere. We talk about this immediate connection amongst Aggies. So, like, understand, this is the first time I've ever had a conversation with Bree. And you know, you know, us just talking. But the, I feel like, yo, this, this is my cousin. Like this, we, you know, we just flow to this family. Like this, is another Aggie, and that's what it is. That's yeah. that's how it's always been with that Aggie pride. So I appreciate you. So thank you, Bree. Thank you for stopping by. Um, excited to see what the Black Collective is going to do in the next several years. Um, and this has been another episode of Aggies Excel. And we will holler at y'all later. Yes, thank you so much. All right. Talk to you later, Bree. All right, bye.